Welcome back to the Wampus Workshop where the lighting is bad and the camera quality is even worse. Well, the other day when I was perusing YouTube, I stumbled upon this video by good old Andy Axe. And when I hovered over it, there's this like seamless transition from the thumbnail to the video itself, which I think is really cool. I actually applied it to the last video that I edited for a recent commission and I think it worked really well. So let's talk about it. There's gonna be three major steps that we go through. Step one is to uh, set up our thumbnail. And this setup process, you're actually gonna have to have access to the thumbnail itself, whether that's the Photoshop file, or if you're working in like a fitting designer or whatever program that you're working in, you can try to make something happen with like just the PNG or JPEG, but it's gonna be a lot easier if you actually have the working file. Step two is going to be import it. And depending on how we set things up, this process will be a little bit different. Step three and our final step will be to animate. That's where we make the magic happen. All right, so let's go over step one, the setup process. And for today's video, we're working with a banger of a thumbnail that I crafted in about um, about five minutes or so. So I would say generally there's two approaches to setting this up. Now I'm gonna talk about both of them, but I'm gonna highly recommend you stick to one just for simplicity's sake. The first and the easiest is to just be uh, an Adobe shill and have Photoshop because within DaVinci Resolve, there is a native PSD file importer. And yeah, if you are already in Photoshop and you have the Photoshop file and things are set up mostly clean, you're kind of good to go. You, you can kind of skip ahead to the rest of the process. Some things that I might recommend doing before importing it into DaVinci is say for instance, if you have like a gradient map or you have an adjustment layer or you know, you have some filters or things that are Adobe specific. I would go ahead and apply and rasterize that layer because sometimes effects like those don't get imported easily into DaVinci. So I have a couple gradient maps saved to these PNG images. So I might go ahead and merge these two so that we just have the one layer. The other thing to know is that when you import PSDs into DaVinci, your text layers will get imported as an image. So, so if you wanna do any kind of text animation within DaVinci, just make note of whatever font you're using in Photoshop so that way you can duplicate it within DaVinci. So what if you don't have Photoshop or even if you're in Photoshop, how can we make our life a little bit easier? This is what I'm gonna recommend. You're gonna to have to do a little bit of thinking. And what I want you to think about is what elements are you gonna to want to separate from different parts of your thumbnail. So for instance, with the thumbnail we're working with here, we kind of have, I would say, three to four major elements of our thumbnail. We have each of our character models. You could either say that's one element or two elements. We have our background, which is the blue sky, green grass, a classic. And then we have the text. And again, you could separate those into being their own elements, or you could combine them to being just one text element. And then we have our divider line right here. So for this example, it's, you know, it's pretty straightforward, but if you're working with a more complicated Photoshop file, what I want you to do is think about what things do you want to separate and distance from the other parts of your file. And what we're gonna do is we're going to merge the layers that we'd like to combine into a singular element and then we're gonna export that as a PNG with a transparent background. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make each of the character models its own file. I'm gonna combine the text with the line to make that a separate file. And then I'm gonna make the background itself its own file. So we'll have, I think, what is that, four? Four different PNGs. And what I'm looking for is this transparent background behind my character. Now, if you're working in GIP or with Affinity or uh, another graphic design uh, software, Normally a transparent background is illustrated by this checkered gray and white background. And that's that's what you want. And once we've done that, I've isolated my one character that I'm gonna use. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit file, export. You can quick export as PNG uh, if you're in Photoshop or what you're gonna wanna do is go to export as, make sure you're saving as a PNG and not a JPEG because the PNG will save the transparency and you wanna make sure that your transparency is checked on. Go ahead and export that. All right, and I've got the folder I'm gonna save it to, so I'm gonna name mine Ghost Element 1. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is export our other individual layers so that we have, um, yeah, our four 
elements all set up, ready to go. All right, when you're all done, you should have a file for each of the things that you're gonna wanna animate within DaVinci Resolve. All right, well, what if you don't have the Photoshop file or the working file where you know you have all of your nice layers? All you have is the actual image itself. Well, unfortunately, what you might have to do is some tomfoolery. And what I mean by that is you might have to go in, mask some stuff out, try to replace the background a little bit and, you know, kind of separate things out on your own. It's still doable. It's just going to be a little more manual for you. So step two is going to be setting up our nodes within the fusion page and DaVinci Resolve so that we can begin our animation for this transition. So I have some gameplay that we're going to transition into. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead to our effects tab, effects, drag in a fusion composition. And what you're going to want to do is make your fusion composition as long as you would like to make this transition. And the length is completely up to you. So by default, my fusion comps are set up to five seconds. I, I don't know. I feel like that's fine. As you start to play with things and figure out uh, how fast things are moving, you might change it. You might need to make it longer, shorter. I don't know, five seconds is fine for now. So we got our fusion composition. Let's go ahead and hop into the fusion page. Okay, we have our blank slate within the fusion page. Now, the only thing that's gonna change about whether or not you saved your thumbnail as a PSD file or as a bunch of different PNGs is how we set up our nodes within the fusion page. And what I mean by that is we're essentially wanting to convert the layers that were in our Photoshop file or whatever file you're working with and convert them to nodes in DaVinci. And the first way is to simply just import the PSD file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up top and hit Fusion, Import, PSD. And we're gonna go over to where our file is located. Where's our file located? There, uh, boom. And you bring that sucker in. And if I connect the output here, for our media out node, you can see we have our uh, our thumbnail, which is pretty cool. It's got all of our layers set up, but you'll notice there's a couple of things different. And this is what I was mentioning previously. For one, um, we lost our gradient maps to both the character models that we had set up. And that's what I meant by DaVinci doesn't always import adjustment layers and some of the other filters properly. So if there's something specifically you want attached to a layer, merge that layer, rasterize it, or rasterize it, whatever, before you open up DaVinci and import it. Uh, the other one is that our text, like I said, is now a media in, it's not a text file, so we can't change the size of our text or do a lot of the other things that are associated with the text plus node in DaVinci. But either way, it's uh, it's set up pretty good. All right, so that's one way of doing it. The other way would be to uh, use our PNGs, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'll go ahead and drag and drop these guys into our media pool and then into the fusion page. Oh, and I think we got our orders mixed up a little bit text and that needs to go behind the two character models. You go ahead and reconnect these guys. And when I want to display a particular node, all I'm doing is I'm hitting the two button on my keyboard. And what that does is display a particular node for us. There we go. We have our thumbnail now back in DaVinci again. Let me actually go ahead and uh, rename our nodes so that we don't get confused. This is gonna be the background. Good deal. So either way, whether you've used the images or you've used the PSD importer, you should get to this place where you have your thumbnail now in DaVinci separated by the different layers. And you could say, well, can't you do this kind of thing within DaVinci itself. Yes, there are ways to like force separation and do some kind of like, you know, generative background, but for the most part, it's gonna be a lot easier to separate things ahead of time and then bring it into DaVinci. Either way though, you should have these all imported and set up into the Fusion page now. Now we're gonna animate it. And in order to do that, we're going to use some of the 3D nodes within DaVinci. If you've never operated in the 3D land within DaVinci, try to follow along. In essence, what we're gonna do is we're going to set up our layers in 3D space and then have them move independently of each other. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect our media out node for now because uh, we're not gonna need it. And then what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna delete our merge nodes because we're gonna want each of these individual elements separate. And what we're gonna do is instead build out our thumbnail in 3D space. So here we go. Now there's gonna be a lot of different ways to do that. And I'm sure a lot of them are gonna be more efficient or better than the way I'm showing you, but this is the way I figured it out and it's the way I know it works. So with our background node over here or whatever image you're working with, whatever layer, go ahead and add an image plane. Now if I hit two to display that, 
you can see we have our background floating here in 3D space. The way I am navigating this window is control plus the scroll wheel will zoom in and out. Alt plus clicking in the middle mouse button will rotate you around. Just clicking in the middle mouse button will pan. And now what we need to do is add an image plane to the rest of our layers. So you can either do the same thing, control space, type in image plane, add one, or you can just hit copy, paste and paste. Now, if I cycle through our different layers, you can see we have all of our images here in 3D space. Next step is how do we combine these guys? Well, instead of just a merge node, what we want is a merge 3D node. So go ahead and add a merge 3D node. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect each of our image planes to the merge 3D node. The merge 3D node works a little bit differently than the conventional merge node. It's set up to register more than just like a background and foreground input. So you can connect as many inputs to this node as you would like. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit two on our merge node and you can see we have it's, it's kind of all set up in 3D space. I mean, it's pretty close. So how do we fix this? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring each of the layers a little bit forward so that they're separated just a little bit. So if I go over to our text rectangle image plane node, and I got the image plane node selected down here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the transform tab, and I'm going to increase the Z translation just a little bit. And the way I did that was actually by holding down the control button and then dragging over to the right with the uh, left mouse button so that you can see our Z is offset in the positive direction by 0 0.005. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the exact same thing with each of the ghost characters, but I'm gonna increase it by just a little bit more so that it sits in front of our text plus rectangle combo. So I have our image plane selected, go over to transform, and I'm gonna drag this forward to maybe 0 0.01. And now it's in front of our, our text here. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the second character model. Go ahead and drag this forward just a little bit. Now, if I were to rotate this around, now we have our, our thumbnail and it's uh, it's floating here <laughs> in good old 3D land. So now that we have our thumbnail reset up in 3D space, before we start animating it, let's get it so that it's actually outputting to our media out node. Cause you'll notice if I drag the output of our merge 3D node to the media out node, it's not gonna connect. That's because we are currently dealing with something with X, Y, Z inputs and the media out node is just there to register things in the X and Y. So what I'm gonna do is with my merge 3D node selected, I'm gonna go ahead and hit full space and hit renderer. And we want the renderer 3D. Boop. And we actually don't need to worry about enabling the lighting and shadow. If you wanna get a little more complicated and do some fun things with uh, some lighting, some point lights and spotlights, go ahead and go crazy. But for us, uh, I'm gonna leave it as is, but I am gonna change the software renderer to the hardware one because I wanted to use my GPU. And now we can connect our render -er 3D node to the media out node. If I tab over, now we can display it. So the last step that we're gonna do in terms of setting up our 3D nodes is to add a 3D camera. The 3D camera is gonna allow us to frame our floating image in whatever way that we want to. So again, I'm gonna select the merge 3D node, control space, we're gonna go to camera, and we want camera 3D. Go ahead and add that. When we do that, our display goes away, but if I go ahead and swap back over to the merge 3D node, so I'm gonna hit two on the merge 3D node, you can see now that we have, we got our little, our camera here, but it is, uh, it is stuck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and position our camera so that it's framing our, our thumbnail so that it fits the screen fully. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm actually, I'm going to split up our preview window by using the double rectangle icon up top here. I'm going to have our media out at two, and then I'm going to change our first display to the merge 3D node, so that way I can see both. I have my camera 3D node selected. We're gonna go over to the transport tab, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this back. Because everything should just be centered on the X and Y, all we should have to do is move this in the Z direction. And yeah, I think we're good. So for me, I'm sitting at 1.65. Let me go ahead and bring this back to the single viewer. And you might be thinking, 
Brandon, we did all this work just to get our thumbnail back in DaVinci the way we had already set it up. Yeah, but now the fun begins. Or it could be the confusing part or the uh, the difficult part. Now this next part of the process is going to completely depend on you and what you wanna do. It can really get as complicated or as simple as you want it to be. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is show you how I would animate something like this. And if you're new to the Fusion page and aren't super comfortable with nodes and how things work and keyframes and stuff like that, I actually made a pretty helpful video that walks through some of the basics and how you would actually apply it to a working example within DaVinci Resolve. So go ahead and check that guy out. And I think what I would like to do for our example is I would like to have each of the characters slide out to the left to the right, have the uh, have the text in the rectangle slide up, and then we can maybe have our background slide down. So let's start with uh, Green Ghost here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a keyframe on frame zero, and let's go forward, I don't know, two seconds? We'll feel it out. And let's go ahead and slide you off. Cool, let's go to our spline graph. I think what I wanna do is have you ease in. Yeah, so have it slowly slide off and then accelerate. Yeah, I think that would look pretty good. Cool, 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 cool. Now I'm gonna repeat that exact same process for the rest of our elements. So I'm on the second ghost character model. I'm gonna go forward two seconds. I'm gonna slide you off. All right, so I went ahead and set up the animations for everything else that all goes to the two second mark. And when I play it forward, see that everything slides off screen. So how can we spice this up? Well, you could do a couple things. Uh, one would be to mess with your camera movement. If I were to go back over to the 3D space and start from the beginning, you can see how these things animate in 3D space. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually animate the camera movement as well. So what I could do is I could start with my camera. I'm gonna go ahead and keyframe the translation in the Z direction, and then also keyframe the rotation in the Z. And at two seconds, maybe we could have it move forward a bit and then rotate a bit. Let's go ahead and control A, ease in cubic. We're just easing in cubic today. Let's tab back to my renderer. And now you can see that we got a little spin. We got a little spin and zoom action, like it's zooming past our thumbnail. So you can get sneaky with it, and you know, you could put like a, if it worked out, like you could put a blue background node behind this so that it worked out uh, nice and clean. Now, if you really wanted to bring this to life and add some flair to it, what you could also do is actually add in some moving elements to your thumbnail so that something's moving once the video starts. What I mean by that is like, for instance, you could bring in a text node and like animate the text to do something cool, or you could just bring in like an overlay. So I have this smoke overlay right here, right? And if I do something similar where I add an image node to that and then connect that to my Merge 3D node, bring it forward just a little bit. And it looks pretty good. Let's go over to our renderer tab, play this through. And so yeah, like, you know, it's, if it fits with your thumbnail, it could just add a little bit more life. You just add a little bit more life to that transition. Now, the last thing I would do if this was something that I was working with is I like to have motion blur on. I'm, I, I don't know, I'm a sucker for motion blur. I just, I am, I like it, okay, sue me. I'm gonna go over to my renderer node, go over to the settings, turn on motion blur, and then maybe up the quality a bit. And then I'll just add some softness to the edges as these things slide off screen. But now if we go back and line up our gameplay so that it's on screen here. Maybe we have a little fade in down there. And there you go. Like I said, you can get really creative with this, with how you kind of apply it and transition to your games. You know, you could do some cool like match cut stuff. I don't know. I think it's really cool, but I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you have questions, please let me know. I will do my best to answer them. And yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.